Hi, Dr. Taylor Van Weinboom here, and we're gonna talk about thyroid issues. In particular, what if your thyroid's been removed? So we have a lot of patients that come in, or potential patients that come in and say, hey, doc, I've had my thyroid removed. Is there anything that you can do for me? And the answer is absolutely yes. And there's too many reasons for that. No one being, it's impossible to completely remove all the thyroid glandular tissue. So a good analogy is that there's gum on the bottom of your sneaker on a hot summer day. You can't get all that off there. It's near impossible. Same thing with uh, the thyroid and the glandular tissue, like we said. So. 90% of hypothyroid patients are autoimmune. So if you still have some thyroid cells left over, they're still acting um, autoimmune to your body and you're still gonna have symptomatology. So we can manage that. Number two is most of the problems that happen with the thyroid and thyroid hormone happen away from the thyroid gland itself, whether it's there or not. So that's the main reason why we can help people. So say the thyroid's been removed and they give you um, either Synthroid or Levothyroxine or whatever medication they're giving you, which are typically T4 substitutes, T4, uh, T4 synthetic. So what happens, and we talked about in our other videos, is if you have a normal thyroid gland, it releases 93% T4, which is inactive hormone, and 7% T3, which is active hormone. So we have to get this inactive over to active hormone, T3. So if you're taking one of these medications, which is a T4, you still have to convert it. So that T4, once you take it in, still has to jump on the thyroid binding globulin. This globulin takes it to where it's supposed to go in the body. So if you have an issue with your thyroid binding globulin, you're, you're capturing too much hormone and not releasing it, that could be one of your issues right there. Like we could say, let's say it jumps on the thyroid binding globulin like it's supposed to, but it goes to your liver, gut, and kidney, which are supposed to convert it from the T4 to the active T3, but you have an issue with the liver or the gut or the kidney and you can't actually convert T4 to T3 like you're supposed to. You're still gonna have symptoms of thyroid issues. Um, so like I say, just with the conversion in and of itself. Also, you could have symptoms of thyroid resistance. So high cortisol, estrogen dominance, inflammation in the body, and if you have any kind of chronic illness or issue, you absolutely have inflammation in your body, and all these things cause thyroid resistance. So what thyroid resistance is, is say you convert all this to T3 like you're supposed to. But what happens with thyroid resistance is it doesn't allow the T3 to cross the cell membrane, the cell uh, barrier, to get into the cell to work like it's supposed to, so you still have all the symptoms of thyroid issues. So all these things occur away from the thyroid gland, and all these things occur whether you have a thyroid or not. So even if you have a thyroid or you don't have a thyroid, there's lots of issues that can happen, and there's lots of things that can be done to get you feeling well. My name is Dr. Taylor Van Weinboom. I hope that helps.